<clears throat> sort of talking about color, I wanted to show you guys this very quickly. Um, so this was something that I'm working on for a client, um, not my illustration, just to sort of, I don't know, I don't know why I don't want to take credit for this, but um, so we were, um, we were talking about uh, color and color relationships, um, things like that. So this was a logo that was given to me. I don't know if I have, I don't have the OG logo, but um, these are the jerseys that they're putting them on. So they wanted these colors. This image is a little bit dark, but so I wanted to make sure that um, A, the colors worked on both jerseys um, because they're actually having these um, cut and sewn. So basically what it is, is they'll output this graphic, just the logo part. They'll output this graphic to a plotter, um, which is essentially a printer with a cutting head. So it's like cutting vinyl, except instead they're going to cut like twill, which is like a heavy, like the jersey numbers material. Um, and then they're going to actually sew... I don't know how much detail. He said not to worry about the detail. So some of it's going to be embroidered. Some of it will be, like I'm assuming some of these finer details will be sewn, um, but largely will be embroidered rather. Largely these will be fabric stuck together and, and sewn. But these are the colors that they'll be using. Um, you'll see here we have these codes. Um, the PMS 7679. Um, I talked about this in my layout class and my uh, illustrator class, but I figure I will mention it in this class since we'll work with color. So the PMS, um, those of you that have taken other classes with me before might recognize this. So it's a Pantone matching system is what that stands for. So uh, Pantone is basically just the industry standard matching system. Effectively, and I can grab the book later, but effectively it's, it's a book of swatches. So like when we're working on our color, uh, our color theory assignments, when we were using like the paint chips to do color interactions and all that fun stuff. So it's basically a book of color matched, um, effectively paint chips, it's not paint, but it's print, printed colors. Um, and the book is what you're matching to. So basically any, I should say good, any decent um, printer, manufacturer, company, whatever, should have a Pantone book or some kind of color matching book that they can that you can work with. Nine times out of ten, it's Pantone. So basically, what happens is when whatever I don't know who's outputting this, but whoever outputs this, this teal that's like the thirty one thirty five C. The C just stands for coated. So there's coated and uncoated, and it's basically the difference between matte and gloss, and they do kind of look a little bit different. Um, I tend to just default to the coated just because that's what I'm used to. Um, so, in theory, if this is being printed, basically the printer will have this file and they have this color information and they'll print off um, either a test print, a swatch, or sometimes they call them strike-offs, which we used to call them strike-offs at my old job. So we would basically take like a piece that had like maybe a chunk, this is going a little too in depth, but maybe a chunk like this so that you can get a decent amount of all the colors, especially since my old job we were printing so huge. Um, but you basically try to get a chunk of the design that has at least all of the colors in it um, so that you can print it and then you take that print and then you take the Pantone book and you literally just hold the Pantone book next to the print. And if the color is a little bit off, if your print is a little bit off, you adjust the printer to the book. Um, so that way you have this one, I keep like air showing the book. Um, so that way you have this one sort of standard to match to, and like basically everybody has that book. So that way this teal is always going to be that teal effectively no matter how, how you're outputting that. Like there is even color matched vinyl if you're doing signage. Um, any kind of printer will be able to match that. They can even match paints to it, things like that. Um, so it's super important for branding and things like that to have consistent color throughout. That's one of the ways we can do it is with Pantone colors. Um, that being said, I wanted to talk a little bit about Pantone, but then I also wanted to talk about, um, just in general, like the color relationships here. Um, I thought it was interesting, might not be the right word, or relatively interesting. Um, given the choice of colors that was in, they basically pulled from the colors of this jersey, which is an EC, there it is, ECHL, which is a minor league team. 
Let me see if I can get, that's their logo. So they kind of wanted to do a similar round with an element in the middle. Um, so I digitized this beer league guy and then did their, their team name and all that fun stuff. But aside from the colors, aside from the palette, um, it was pretty much up to me to use the colors however I wanted, right? So I had to think of those color relationships. So kind of like with our Warhol assignment that we just did, right? I had to think about the color schemes that we're using, right? So I have my color scheme here, and then I have some near complement. I definitely have some complementary pairs, and then I have some near complementary pairs. So I kind of had to be aware of that, and then what to use for highlights and things like that. So I had originally his jersey was yellow, and I think the highlights were orange, and the yellow and the purple were getting that that like weird color vibration intensity because it was the purple and the yellow complementary colors, so it was interacting a little bit strangely which we didn't necessarily like. So we went with, I changed it to um, orange. So it was a little bit less intense, but still um, looked pretty decent. And then they decided they wanted to get rid of yellow as a relatively main color in general. So I just left it with the beer. And I'm sure that they won't mind that. So there's not a ton of yellow, but I figured the yellow for the beer might be slightly interesting. But I just thought it was relatively interesting after doing our last color assignments and color theory that I had this project come up that was like definitely some complementary colors with the purple and the yellow and then near complementary with the blue, the, although it's teal, but the teal and the orange. So you get some relatively in interesting color, action, color interactions. So I had to watch out for some of these color interactions while I was making some of the color choices for this logo. So I figured I would just start and show you like a relatively practical use of what we're learning, right? 